and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this Dalmatian and specifically I wanted to talk about how I paint animals with spots. So you could use this method for painting any animal with spots. So perhaps cheetahs, leopards, hyenas, fallow deer, even giraffes and their spots are quite large. Before I show you the painting, I want to show you the palette that I used for this painting and how I mixed that sand colour. I am using my usual limited palette. Please see the item description for the full colours. I am mixing together Elysian Crimson and Ultramarine Deep to give me a purple. I want a warmer purple than a cooler purple, so I am using more red than blue. I am now going to add some cadmium yellow light. I'm working with those complementaries again of yellow and purple but also remember that yellow, red and blue will also give me a brown and that's pretty much what I've got here, a warm dark brown. Adding white is going to start knocking out that chroma and cooling that brown down. To get that sand colour I'm going to add yellow ochre light. To summarise, this is my base sand colour. To make it warmer, I can add my yellow ochre light or my cadmium yellow light or possibly Elysian crimson. To cool it down, I can add a purple with a stronger leaning of blue or just add blue. For the greys in a dog's coat, I would suggest watching my video, How to Mix Colourful Greys, which is available on my channel and we'll show you all the different ways you can mix grey. Let's get on with the painting and I will talk about what I am doing as I go along. I have speeded the first part of this video up, but once we get on to painting the spots, I will slow the video down so you can see the process a bit more clearly. I am starting off with a very thin wash of paint. I am mixing the colours that I intend to use but I am more concerned really about getting the placement of the dog correct and getting my drawing correct. It's quite a tricky pose and as the painting is small, if I am out with my drawing it will look off. Painting expressively on a small canvas is tricky, especially when dealing with anatomy, so I want to make sure I am correct in my drawing before I get further into the painting. I'm keeping my paint really thin with my mineral spirits so that it dries quickly I, and I can have another go at it in the next day. I'm not even considering the placement of the spots at this stage. On the second layer I am laying that paint a bit thicker but the paint is not overly thick at this stage because I want to be able to paint over the top of it easily. I am thinking about this dog purely in terms of shape and the decisions that I make are determined by the shapes in front of me. For example, that back far leg is a separate independent shape from the rest of the body. As it sits nearer to the background and is in the shadows, it is easier for me to lose the edges in this area and know that it will work. I can merely suggest this back leg. I am thinking of the shape independently from the rest of the body and because of this I have added the spots early on. For the rest of the dog's body I am not concerned with the spots at all. I am concentrating on building a sense of form using my brush strokes to suggest the contour lines of the dog. I am concentrating on my values, my temperature shifts and also what colour I am looking at. Dealing with each one in turn, my values. So that's how light or dark it is. If you are struggling to see this, then if possible, turn your reference photo into a black and white image. This will help you separate value from colour. Then photograph your painting at various intervals and turn your photo into black and white. 
I do this within the settings of my phone in iPhotos. This gives me a good enough idea if I am out with my values anywhere in the painting. For your temperature shifts, if you are struggling to see these, ask yourself if the light in your reference photo is cool or warm. Remember that warm light equals cool shadows and cool light equals warm shadows. So if you can identify the light, this should help you. You can also try holding a grey card up to the area that you are painting. If it is a mid-tone value, a mid-tone grey card will be fine. If it is a light area, try a white card. Then ask yourself if the area you are painting is warmer than your card. If it is, then this means you will need to use yellows, oranges and reds. If it's not warmer, then you'll need to use blues, blue-greens or blue-purples. Finally, keep standing back. If possible, have a reference photo the same size as your painting and put a bit of distance between yourself and your painting. Make sure the painting is side by side next to your reference photo. You should be able to see where you are out. I am doing all of these things, but because I am viewing my reference photo as a collection of shapes rather than as a Dalmatian, it is easy for me to ignore the spots. It's not until I feel I have a good sense of the dog occupying that space that I begin to put them in. I will add the spots over wettish paint. It's dried a little bit, but it's not a prerequisite for putting them in. My paint is thin enough that I am not too worried about losing control of my painting. Now I'm going to slow down this video so you can see what I am doing a bit more clearly. I will try and give as much commentary on what I am doing as possible, but may at times go quiet. Please don't adjust your volume, but it's just quite hard to talk non-stop at this stage. The brush I am using is by Artmaster. It is a flat brush, but it's an oldish brush, so it's giving irregular strokes with soft undefined edges. This is what I want. I do not want my spots to have a hard edge. I am only at this stage putting in the obvious ones. I am squinting down at my reference photo and only putting in the ones I can see. I am laying my strokes both vertically and horizontally to make sure the spots have an irregular feel to them. Remember, in nature, things are not nice and neat. They are haphazard and random, and I am trying to suggest this with my brush strokes. It is also important to vary the colour of your spots. Here I am varying between a warm brown and a cool brown. I am using my Elysian Crimson, Ultramarine Deep and Cadmium Yellow Light for my brown. Where it is cool, I am using more blue. Where it is warm, I am using an orange, which I am mixing into this brown. My orange consists of Cadmium Red and Yellow Ochre Light. My warm spots are only really appearing in this area here along the front part of the body where the light is hitting the fur. I've laid a good few of these spots but I'm just going to speed up the video again to show you the next stage. If I were to leave the spots just painted on top of what I've already done, it would look odd. I need to integrate these spots into what I've done already. I'm now going to use my long haired coma brush and I'm going to both gently brush over the top of my painted spots to make my spots a little more irregular, but I am also going to have to add paint around them 
and also paint over the top of them. This is the point where it is easy to lose control of the painting. I've already established my overall values in that dog's coat. So I'm mixing up these colours again and painting in between those spots, pulling the edges of those spots into the lighter areas of its fur. And because there is paint already down, I don't have to worry about making sure I cover every single area with paint. If I miss bits, it doesn't matter because I have already established a good base colour from which to build up my spots on. For my lighter highlighted areas, I am adding much thicker white paint. I am adding cadmium yellow light to my white to give it a warm glow. Also bear in mind as well, there is a lot of purple in this painting as I am working from a limited palette. The majority of my colours have been mixed from a purple base. Yellow and purple are complementary colours and look great when you lay them side by side. I have a lot of silvery purples in the cooler area of my dog's fur, so adding yellow to my highlighted areas works really well. I am starting to lose the darkness of my spots once I've started painting through them, but that is okay as I'm just going back and re-adding darker colour where I want them darker. Some of them I will leave to just suggest the impression of the spots. It is tricky as it is a small painting, but I'm just trying to not deviate too much from the values and colours I've already established. Even though I am adding the spots and looking at that detail, I am still trying to consider the form of the dog as a whole. It's a little bit like that expression, not seeing the wood for the trees. In this instance, you have to see the wood and you have to see the trees and be constantly assessing how one impacts the other. Standing back constantly will help.
You'll notice a temperature change in those spots down the front of the dog. I have started to mix in my orange into that dark brown, which is both lightening it and warming it up. Sorry about the head in the way. I'm using a rigger brush for that fine detail. I find these quite handy as they hold quite a bit of paint and they are good for doing areas which require a bit of precision. I'm trying to make judgment calls about where I need to refine further and put in more detail and where I need to leave it and just let the looser paint suggest what is going on. It's easy to overdo it, especially on those feet. A good way to get rid of those hard edges is just to take a dry soft brush and brush against the direction in which you have laid the paint. So here I have laid a vertical line of white paint and I'm using my coma brush horizontally to break up that line and give it some softness.
I am not painting through the back leg as much as I have with the front legs and chest. This is because I want a bit of contrast to my brush strokes. I have the more worked area where I want the viewer to look, so it has to be more interesting. The back legs are not as important. Really, the back legs are about that stance and the smoothness of the paint helps exaggerate this. That is pretty much the finished painting. I'll just give you a close up so you can see the brushwork a bit better. I hope you have found today's video useful and will join me for next week's video. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.